Hello, everyone, and welcome to part three of our branding webinar series, Winning with Wardrobe at the Greenwood Women's Business Center. I'm Lisa Carter, Program Coordinator at the U.S. Black Chambers, fondly known as the National Voice of Black Businesses. We represent over 140 Black Chambers of Commerce and small businesses across the nation. We're guided by our five pillars of service, advocacy, access to capital, contracting, entrepreneurial training, and chamber development, and our mission to provide committed visionary leadership and advocacy in the realization of economic empowerment. If you follow this series from start to finish, you know what time it is. It's time to drop your business name things you hope to learn throughout the series and any questions you have in the chat box and we'll address those as many of those as possible at the end. If you're unfamiliar with USBC in our latest expansion, the Greenwood Women's Business Center is a monument of the affluent legacy of Greenwood's historical district interlaced with the vision of success for women-owned businesses in the community. If you missed part two of our webinar series, you missed out, images forever, Miss. Lee Jones, the executive producer and co-creator of Shop Talk, guided us from drab to fab with beautiful visuals to own a room. Ms. Lee Jones articulated the importance of presenting your best book cover for opportunities to promote yourself. We learned uh, about the image um, and requiring you to show up daily and the best way to do so is to hit the malls on the weekends for those closeout sales. Mm -hmm. without, yeah. further, <laughs> without further delay, we want to love to invite Miss Lee Jones to the conversation. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here for part three. Let's do it. Absolutely. Well, you, uh, we're, we're excited to have you speak to us about winning with wardrobe, and I will give you the floor. All righty. Well, I hope you all have learned something from session one and two. Uh, they have really been exciting, um, just talking about some basic things that we need to do. So if this is your first one, uh, just like Lisa said, I'm Katrina Lee Jones. I am a small town girl born and raised in Florida and actually North Florida. So if you know anything about Florida, I'm in that panhandle. So you know that I am truly a country girl, which that's okay. Um, I love that. I've been doing this. I said I was born with it. I was in retail for over 20 years, and I have been doing this as my business for a little bit over 10 now, and it's been up and down. And as entrepreneurs, you all know that it has been up and down. But what I can say I've been consistent is, is how I present myself and how I present my brand. Right now, people may not remember my name, but they remember, oh, the girl or the lady with the red hair. Um, that would be me. And it, the funny and wild lipstick because I do love my lipsticks. I'm not really that into um, makeup. So session part one, we talked about foundation. Part two, we said, how are you presenting yourself and your brand? And this one, I just want to show you 15 essential things or pieces to elevate your brand image. Um, I tell everybody it's really simple uh, for some of us, but it is difficult for some people. So I don't take that lightly um, at all, that some people just don't like to shop. Some people don't know what to select when they shop. They don't know what their body shape is. So it's difficult for them to shop. So I always tell people that. So my number one thing that we need to do is organization. I tell people two things you do every morning. I believe I said it in session one, you go in your bathroom and you go in your closet. Those are two things that, you do every single morning. If you have your clothes somewhere else, it's a closet somewhere. So you need to be organized. When you are organized, it really helps you see what you have. It really helps you see things that you may need, things that you may need to get rid of. And it makes your day go by so much easier. So if only you can change out your hangers and make them all the same, I said it before in one of the sessions, this will make a difference in how you see your wardrobe. That would be something that you can do instantly. Um, so organization is essential. That's part of that foundation. So be organized. And we talked about this in 
uh, session slash part one, your undergarments. That Those are foundational pieces. You have to have on the right undergarments. You have to have on the right brassiere, uh, the right underwear. If you need something that your, your Spanx or if you use a different type of undergarment, that's fine as well. I talked about in one of the other sessions why I always usually say Spanx. And then if you're on a budget, you know, go to Target. Spanx have an asset line that you can purchase pretty much the things that you see right now. And they have a nice collection of bras and they even come in our skin tone as well. So number two, ladies, let's get those undergarments together. Let's stop showing those panty lines. Let's stop uh, really accentuating our back fat because that's what we're doing when our bras are too tight sometimes. And it, it just doesn't work. We can, we can do better on that for sure. So with that, and we'll get into what you can do to really enhance your wardrobe, even if you are a girl that likes simple things. Do an oversized handbag. Listen, it does not have to be designer. So let's not get fooled that, oh, I need to have a designer bag and this and that. Designer bags are investment pieces. If you stroll around the internet, the real, real, rebag, you know, all of these sites. They are selling authentic handbags. So that lady that paid all that money for that Chanel or something like that, that YSL, they are reselling those handbags. So uh, designer handbags are an investment, but you don't have to do a, a designer handbag. I tell women, if you're not vegan or anything like that, having a leather handbag is very essential in your wardrobe. And you know what? Be bold. Do a bright color uh, that you're not too afraid of that you can kind of substitute for the black. So, you know, do a red, do a yellow, do a pink and, and try that. And I really do think that you will see that it will enhance. We'd like, we'd like to throw everything in our handbags anyway. And I'm a tote bag type of girl. So my tote bags are very colorful and they are big because I need a lot of stuff going in my handbags. You know, your mom always tell you a woman should always be prepared. So have everything in your handbag, you know? Just take it out if it's too heavy, leave it in the car and put it back in. That, it's just that simple. So we'll go to our next one. Uh, I talked about it before. Having a white shirt is essential piece in your foundation. Every woman should have at least one or two white shirts in her wardrobe that are white. And these are some really good examples of some beautiful white shirts. We have some casual ones here. We have some dressy ones here. We have some classic ones here, but having a white shirt and put it on with jeans, put it on with a colored bottom, put it on with a pattern bot bottom will really enhance your wardrobe and you will see what a difference that will make. So get you a couple of white shirts. And when they begin to turn yellow, just go ahead and give them away and I would also recommend that you wash your white shirts. And if you don't like to iron, like I have a lot that need to go to the cleaners just to be pressed. But I don't recommend you sending them to the cleaners because that's how sometimes they get a little bit more yellow sooner than later when you send them to the cleaner. So that's just a, a tip for you when it comes to your white shirts. And having a printed trouser or a printed pair of pants, however you want to say. Now, this is fun, fun, fun. I know a lot of us don't really want to venture out into having prints at the bottom, especially if you're bottom heavy. I get it, excuse me, because I'm bottom heavy as well. But you know what? I'm like, I will find a pair of pants or trousers that are going to look great for my body type, and I'm putting on those printed pants. Because you put on those printed pants and you can even put on a simple tank top and a denim jacket. And just like you see it here, she has on a denim shirt and put on some nice shoes and you are on your way. And you don't even know that just that simple thing it will make a difference in your wardrobe and it'll make a difference in your wardrobe fairly quickly. And people will give you so many compliments and you're thinking like, oh, I just put on these pants and just a simple top, but it's just really how you present 
those items. And I always tell people, we wear our clothing, our clothing do not wear us. Always remember that. They, if you have a pair of pants, they can't move unless you put, on, put them on. If you have on a shirt, it can't move unless you put it on. So they don't wear us, we wear them. So get you a pair of printed trousers, just branch out. You can do it, you can do it. Make it simple. You don't have to be that bold um, in the beginning. So I would most definitely say get your pair for sure. Oh, uh, and black and white, you can never go wrong with black and white in any season. Spring, summer, fall, winter, resort. And if you don't know what resort is, resort is that transitional season between the fall, winter, and spring, summer. So whenever you hear people say resort collection, that's that transition season. You can never go wrong with black and white, period. If you're having a hard time, you don't know what to wear, put on that white shirt and put on you a pair of black pants or a black skirt or black jeans. You will say, oh, you'll be like, oh, wow, this was so simple. And if that's gonna be a uniform, do it in black and white. You have that oversized handbag in a color and you have on your beautiful heel, you, you have something going on. So I tell people when in doubt, do black and white for sure. And bold earrings. This is so fun. Now I am, um, I will say that I, I step myself. I say do the bold earrings um, because if you like things simple, having fun in your earrings is a good way. For me, I am a girl that my clothing is always vibrant. So I do a little stud that I have on my ear. And like, every time you see me, you'll probably see me with these earrings on because everything else has so much going on. So I don't wanna have too many things going on in my ear. So a tip and a rule for that, if you do bow earrings, then keep everything else, um, especially up here, simple. Because you don't wanna be bold here and bold here, it begins to be too much. So if you love bold earrings, maybe do a simple necklace or not a necklace at all, and then have your look, you know, be vibrant. But if you like um, to be vibrant everywhere else, I would say, you know, don't do the bold earring, but most definitely get you a couple pair um, that you will be able to uh, mix and match in your wardrobe. And wide leg trousers are for everyone. I tell people, don't, don't let people think that, oh, you can't wear wide leg trousers because you're hippie and this and that. No, I'm hippie and I wear wide leg trousers. But the thing is for me, for my shape, what we have to do is we have to do a flat front wide leg trousers. We can't do trousers with pleats in them because when we do wide leg trousers with pleats in them, then that really accentuate and make us look wider. So if you wanna get your wild, wild leg pair of pants, do a flat front if you are hippie. But if you are a thin girl, you can wear the ones with the pleats and all those things because they're not going to make you look hippie. And you may want to look um, a little wider at the bottom than us. So for us, ladies that are bottom heavy, do flat fronts. And then ladies that are a little slimmer, they can kind of do the pleated ones and all those things. So for wild leg pants, get you a couple pair um, in your wardrobe and look at, you can wear with that white shirt, you know, and you can wear with that a denim shirt and you can put it on with a blazer. So there are so many things that you can do with your wild leg pants. All right, so a printed skirt and a white blazer. You know, I feel these are must haves in your wardrobe. If you are a skirt girl, if you're not a skirt girl, stick with the printed trousers. But if you do like skirts, get you a printed skirt, get you a white blazer that you could throw on with pretty much anything. I don't know what white or black does not pair with. It goes with everything. So get those two things in there, the white blazer. Look, we can put it on with those printed pants we had. We can wear it with the wild leg pants that we just saw. You can put it on with a pair of jeans um, and a simple tank top. So there are so many things that you can do when you have a white blazer and a printed skirt. Listen, if you're going somewhere, 
again, you get a white shirt. That's why you have to get more than one because we don't want you wearing the same white shirt um, all the time. But most, most definitely, if you can, invest in that white blazer um, because that'll take you a lot, a, a long way, but make sure you don't get any coffee stains and things like that because it's hard to get those out of that white blazer. Oh yeah, and having a colored denim. I think this is so much fun. It's almost kind of like having those printed trousers. If you don't want to do a vibrant red or pink, you can do a cobalt blue is what you see now. And look what she has on. She has on a white and black blazer, um, a statement necklace, but you see that her it, she doesn't have on any earrings or they're really, really simple because she already has so many things going on. So those are little simple rules that you can do. But yeah, get your pair of colored blazers. I mean, excuse me, colored denim. You know, go to some stores, try them on, see what fits best for you and just give it a try. You'll be surprised. And a pencil skirt is, uh, I look at all these are essential. So you probably gonna see me say it's a must have every time. A pencil skirt, we all can wear a pencil skirt, even the bottom heavy girls. I wear my pencil skirt and I like it to be high-waisted. For us, it's really nice for us to have a high-waisted pencil skirt because sometimes when we're bottom heavy, we may be a little bit slimmer around our waist. So that pencil skirt is really going to accentuate our waist and give us a flawless look. So go in the store, try on some, order some, make sure you check the return policy just in case it doesn't fit that you can exchange it or return it to wherever you get it from if you purchase it online. So a pencil skirt is a must have and the way she has it here is, is beautiful. All right, statement necklace. So again, a statement necklace, bold earrings are things that you want to have in your wardrobe but you don't want to wear them at the same time. You're gonna either do your statement necklace or you're gonna either do your bold earrings. We're not doing them at the same time because it'll be too much. It'll seem like you are trying to do the most and not succeeding. So we don't want that um, at all. And there's a lot of places that you can get really nice statement necklaces from uh, that will last you quite a while. So it's some pretty ones out there. And this one is beautiful too. I love those colors in that. All right, and a color pump. Now, some women like Katrina, girl, I am not wearing heels. Listen, you can get you a pair of heels. They even have little kitten heels. They have like 88 mm, which are probably like an inch and a half or two inches. Get you a pair of pumps that has some color to them. This is one of the funnest things that I ever do. I love myself a colored pair of shoes. I think I have green, pink, and I can have on something simple. And I put on those shoes with that pop of color and it changes the entire look. It just elevates me to the next level. So get your pair of colored pumps. But if you don't wear pumps, you can get your pair of colored loafers. You can get your pair of colored flats. So I don't want you to think that you have to get a pair of pumps. You don't, but just get some color on those feet. And a floral dress is what I call, um, it doesn't have to be floral, but a day dress. Um, it's really nice to have a day dress in your wardrobe because when you have those brunches, when you have a day wedding that you need to, to go to, it's so easy to go in and say, oh, I know, I remember I have this beautiful dress and you'll be able to find it because your closet is organized that I can wear. And I do that all the time. When I get invited to events, I have a lot of printed dresses, floral dresses, and I say, oh, well, I can wear this. And then I have to think, how many times have I worn this dress already? Because I do repeat. People say you don't repeat. Uh, I do repeat. So, but I'm strategic when I repeat. You know, I don't wear the same dress or the same floral dress maybe uh, two times in one month or three times in one month. So I stretch it out. So people kind of like, ah, does she wear the same thing? I do. But this is a nice dress to have in your wardrobe if you're going to church, if you are going to brunch, if you have a day wedding uh, that you're going to, and you know if you have something that's going on during the day that you say, I, I really can wear a nice dress, 
then having a full dress in your wardrobe will really help you and elevate you to a different level. So just think about you wearing that floral dress, you put on a pair of those colored pumps, you have that beautiful handbag. And with this, you can put on some bold earrings and don't really do anything around your neck because the dress is already speaking for itself. And you are out the door, honey, and you are looking fabulous. And you didn't even realize like, oh, all of this came together so quickly and so nicely and compliments coming in. Like I need a quarter every time somebody give me a compliment because I'll be rich by now. So that would that is all that I have for those 15 pieces. Find them, locate them somewhere. They are out there for the finding. We have so many black business owners that have their own boutiques right now. And you can find a lot of these beautiful pieces in their boutiques. And a lot of them are doing really good quality uh, merchandise. So I would say find some black uh, designers because that's what I do first. I go to my black websites first to see what I can find for myself and for my clients. And then I venture out uh, to other ones. And follow me on social media. It's at Styles by Katrina on my Instagram, on my Facebook. If you have any more questions, Lisa has, you know, my email that you all can email me any questions that you have, or, you know, if you're stuck in something or if you need a stylist, hey, I always tell people I'm from, I'm from, I'm for hire, you know, I'm an entrepreneur just like you, girl. So that's it, Lisa. I think I'm done. I was so quick, but I think I like, I have four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome and beautiful presentation. Absolutely love the images. Every time we speak with you, it's like, oh my gosh, I leave feeling like I can go and just pick out this beautiful outfit. And <laughs> so for. you can do it. We yeah. all can do it. Yes, absolutely loved it. Um, so what we'll do now, we're going to open up the floor for any questions. Um, some of the ones I have here uh, in series one, you cited the vital step uh, to a full wardrobe was a, an organized closet. And two, you said it was a uniform of sorts. Um, what do you recommend or advise for professional risk takers? Um, and then what visual aids or processes um, help you to have those groundbreaking combinations. Okay. Um, what's the first part again? Just give me part one part at a time. Sure, sure. So <laughs> what do you what do you advise for the professional risk taker? So one of the things, and I'll give this kind of like overview, being in corporate settings or being in those business settings, a lot of time, you know, it was common to kind of dim down your, mm -hmm. your wardrobe. And so how do we still incorporate those beautiful colors and do th do so in a tasteful, tasteful way? Yeah. You know, it's so funny that you said that. We have always had to do that as Black women. I have, I remember I interviewed for a pharmaceutical position way back in the day. Remember my hair is red. Um, and then it was back when we had the little flip. So I had some length to it. That's when I had a, a creamy crack. So I had a little flip to it. And I had on this um, pinstripe suit, honey, I looked good, but it was too much for them. I did not get that job. Oh, no. I did not get that job um, because I really do believe it. It was because of the way that I looked. I was just, you know, I was just too much. And it was okay because I wasn't going to change too much of who I was but I did learn something another job that I interviewed for my hair was growing out and my hair grows out it grows out my natural color so I was um I interviewed for this job and my hair was kind of like ombre and it was fine it was fine but when I started my job I had went to my hair salon I got my hair done honey they had already hired me and I came in that first day of work and my hair was red Oh, it was too much for them. The My direct manager asked me like, oh, can you tone it down a little bit? My hair. He was like, can you tone it down a little bit? I'll make it a little darker, blah, 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 blah. Um, I said, yeah, I can do that, but it's going to be red. Mm. I said, because the other girls in here, they ain't blonde, baby. They weren't born that way. You know, I said, you know, and I did it in a professional manner. I said, they're, 
that's not their natural hair color either. So if you're going to make me change, you're going to make me want me to change my hair color. It's going to be red. You know what I mean? But I can tone it down. I can do that. But it's going to be red because if you're going to make me change my hair color, then all these girls in here right. need to change their hair color too to their natural thing. So, I mean, so I get it. Um, as a woman of color, we've always had to dim down. But I think those days are over with it because they don't accept us either way. You know, we've had to, 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 to change our hair. That's why we got straight hair because we wanted to make it more acceptable and things like that. And um, so I think that you should be you and be authentically you. If you work in a conservative um, environment, keep that into consideration when you're shopping, keep that in consideration when you are going to work, but I still think you should be fabulous in doing that. So if it's having the bold earrings, then wear the bold earrings. If it's having the colored pair of shoes and wear the colored pair of shoes. If it's having, you know, that beautiful uh, white shirt or a, a printed skirt or something like that. So just make sure that you incorporate yourself somewhere in your wardrobe because they don't accept us anyway. So why do I need to conform to what this person wants of me? And they don't even accept me anyway. So I might as well give them a little bit of me you know what I mean? I know we have to kind of uh, bring it down because we'll be labeled angry Black women um, so quickly, but why do I have to be angry because I'm passionate about something or, or things like that that Black people don't understand? We've had to fight this for a very long time, and we do it daily if we don't work for ourselves. And then we still do it when we go into other business meetings and you know want to get capital and, and things like that. We still have to do those things. So I say always give them you. Uh, because you can't be anyone else. Gotcha. And I love that answer. And that is definitely uh, something that we all face uh, each day. Um, but what are, I think with the combinations, what are some patterns or textures that you might say, be careful? I know in today, mm -hmm. you see so much of uh, pairing a number of different, like you said, uh, a minute or accessories with each other back you know, years ago in, in fashion, you would never put those two together. So what are your, um, what's your advice around it? Um, I would say take, I would say take, take the risk. Um, I, I, I would say most definitely take the risk. I, I'm a mixed pattern type of girl. I always say when you see, and I should have put it on here, um, the color wheel, I should have put the color wheel on there for us. So colors right beside each other, looks really good together. And then even colors that are across from each other look good together. But we're discovering that more in fashion now because like you said, back in the day, nobody would do um, like a yellow and an orange together or you know a pink and a red together and all this other stuff that they wouldn't do those things. But now um, that you're discovering, like when you look at the color wheel, uh, a lot of colors go well together but people don't really think about it. You know what I mean? Like you can wear blue and yellow. You wouldn't even think that blue and yellow would, would go together because the blue is like here and the yellow is um, up at top, but they're still diagonal from each other. So I would say take the risk. Um, the only thing I would say when you do your mixed patterns, uh, do your mixed patterns in a way that they're in the same color family. And I think that's probably like, if you're going to do uh, mixed patterns in, in black and white, so it really doesn't matter what, what if it's stripes or if it's um, hounds too, you can do that at the top and do something at the bottom. So I would say take the risk, but I most definitely would say look in the mirror first and see how do you feel wearing that? Are you confident enough to wear that? Are you putting it on and because, oh, well, Katrina said I should put this on. Are you insecure? So we're going back to your clothes are wearing you, you're not wearing them. So that's why I always say, take the risk. I do it all the time. I tell people, just take it. Look in the mirror first. And if you go look in the mirror, you know when it's not flowing and it's not working. And if it's not, just be like, mm, I, think I, I think I'll do something else. Like this, this is not working right now. So take the risk, but look in the mirror first. 
Gotcha. And I love that you mentioned the color wheel because that was actually a question. It says, what visual aids or processes support your groundbreaking wardrobe combinations? And we know you mentioned having the organized closet um, and then the color wheel. What are some other processes that um, you know viewers can try to create those combinations? Um, I would say, of course, the color wheel. I say take the risk um, because you would never know we only have this one life to live. And my thing is, why not have fun? We know tomorrow is not promised to any of us. You know, take, take the risk. Organization for me is a huge, huge key. I'm not a uh, trendy type of girl. Um, I will always, I always say, you know, be careful and be mindful of the pieces that you're picking out for your wardrobe. Because me, I'm not, people say that, oh, you are trendy. I'm not, I'm not a trendy, trendy type of girl. I don't go with trends. I tell people, listen, I will start some, but I don't go with, go with a lot. I get inspiration from, you know, different places. And when I see different colors together, I'm like, oh, I have those two colors in my wardrobe. So you can do that. You can go and, you know, go on the Instagram and, and you can get um, inspiration from different people or colors that they're doing. And you may have those colors in your closet. So, you know, take the risk of putting it together and, and see what happens. And you'll probably end up being pleasantly surprised that, oh, I had this in my closet all along. So look for inspiration um, when you're out shopping. Look for inspiration on your Instagram. And, you know, when you get those emails from the stores, look and see, you know, what they say is trending um, right now and see what you have in your closet already and be willing to take... Um, be willing to do investment pieces, you know, in your wardrobe, because I tell people, and I'm, I'm a very transparent person, you know, I told people there was a time in my life where I didn't have any money to shop. And, and people would be like, oh my God, you look so nice every time you come out. They didn't know that the piece that I probably wear, I had it like five or six years ago, or I've had it for a very long time. But the reason I was, I'm still able to look good because I was able, willing to invest in certain pieces. And people are like, oh, I don't want to pay that much money for a shirt. But you know what? Those investment pieces took me a span of six or seven years. When I didn't have any extra money to shop, I still had to get up and get dressed. I still had to, to represent myself. So I was able to pull from those clothing that I had for all those long, that long time and be able to wear it because I made choices of making investments. And I didn't always buy it when it was regular price. I'm one of those girls because I shop for a living. I would kind of wait and see like, okay, well, I'm gonna give myself three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks and see when this top goes on sale. Oh, see when these pants go on sale. I'm going to wait for that. And by me making those decisions, I was able to look good when I didn't have any money to shop, I'm wearing stuff that I had five or six years ago. So I would say do that as well. Awesome. And I do, I do the same thing. I absolutely, I've had pieces for several years. And like you said, when you have a good, a good item, it never goes out of style. It just keeps exactly. coming back. Um, and then you mentioned earlier uh, that you would recommend, you know, taking certain items that you want to give a crisp, your wardrobe a crisp look mm -hmm. to the cleaners to be pressed. Um, are there any other wardrobe maintenance tactics that you swear by? Um, I do. I, I wash everything. <laughs> I feel like I wash everything. I do. I even, if you probably want, I wouldn't wash a gown. So I guess I'll take it back. Wouldn't wash a gown. And maybe certain jack, maybe certain jackets. If it's according to how the jacket is made, I wouldn't wash that. Mm -hmm. But I do wash major ninety nine point nine percent of my wardrobe goes in the washing machine. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people, but I wash things separate and I wash them on delicate cycle. But I think what gives me longevity is I hang everything. I don't dry anything. I dry my sleepers. You know, I dry my pajamas. Um, I don't dry my bras. My bras lay flat. I dry uh, my underwear um, and a couple of tank tops I may dry uh, because I get some and they, they do wash pretty well. But 
Everything else, I hang up. I do, I hang up, I hang up my shirts, I hang up my dresses, I hang up my pants, I lay my um, my jeans flat. Um, so I think that's what gives me a longevity of my entire wardrobe. I laundry things, I make sure I don't mix colors together. You know, if I have some silk shirts, I don't care if one is white, one is blue. I'm going to wash that blue with my blues. I'm washing the whites with the whites. So I think the way that I do my laundry um, has really been successful for me. Like I don't let people do my laundry. I don't let my children, you can, they already know you can put mom stuff if it's separated in the wash, but if it's not, don't touch my laundry. <laughs> I don't, and they already know that because I don't want to use wash if I pay a certain amount of money or if I have a, this designer top or something like that and what if you mix it in with something else girl I'm going to be upset with you if that <laughs> and then I'm going to be really upset with you if you throw my clothes in the dryer because mm -hmm. you throw your clothes in the dryer don't do so my children we have a rule they don't touch my laundry and that and I think that's what has given me longevity in my wardrobe the way that I wash my clothes and I hang everything up my children own the lot, my clothes hanging all on the door. Just let it be. And when it dries, I'll come get it. So that's, I think that's really what's helped me out. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. I had to write that down. Wash yeah, I, I wash everything, but I hang everything to dry. That is awesome. Um, and then the last question we have here. So we definitely want to give opportunity for you to continue, like you said, to promote yourself. So we said, what tips would you recommend for those with poor design taste? Um, I would say go with a black and white. If you have a hard time and you're like, oh, I don't know what to wear. Find you a pair of black wide leg pants or a black straight trousers because everybody don't like wide leg pants. Some people like the trousers straight. So find you a pair of those. Get you that white shirt. Um, get you that white blazer. And I would say go with black and white for now. Go with black and white until you are confident enough to do something else. And you can go on most um, majority of department stores and things like that to find a really nice pair of black pants, a really white, a nice top because it's spring, summer now. And, you know, everything is probably going to, we're in May. So everybody starts doing their sales, June, July, getting ready for fall. So you just have to kind of know those cycles, but you should always be able to find a really nice white shirt and black pants. So I would say go with black and white. If you are having a problem or having issues, just want to look your best, you'll look good in that for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Miss Lee Jones. We absolutely have enjoyed this series. Um, yeah. Any of you who are looking for Miss Lee Jones, her email is it okay if we share. Oh yeah, yeah. You can um you can share my email, my website. Okay. Yeah, do all that stuff. It's fine. Yes, absolutely. So to, to message her directly, her email is Katrina at stylesbykatrina.com. Yep. And you want to make sure this information she's given today, oh my goodness, is life-changing. I'm taking <laughs> notes. I have a page full of notes <laughs> from today's session. So you make sure you reach out yeah. um, for your wardrobe needs. Um and then uh, let's see. And then with your website, you want, is it going to be Styles by Katrina? Yeah, it's Styles by Katrina.com. Yep. I made everything real simple. Awesome. We, well, we enjoyed it. Um, and what we'll do, if you have any remaining questions, even though the series is ending, please feel free to drop those, continue dropping those in the chat. and We will go through and respond um, after the webinar. Um, but if you really enjoyed this session as much as we did, y'all make sure to share this series and follow the Greenwood Women's Business Center for more content like this. We really appreciate each and every one of you for attending and participating in today's session. And a tremendous thank you to our speaker, Ms. Katrina Lee Jones, for sharing her expertise with us. Um, be sure to attend our other live webinars. Um, by black.us will be hosting a live webinar uh, where you can learn ways to drive revenue to your business via an extensive online community. And that'll take place June 13th at 5 p.m. 
You'll also not want to miss NABOB's Foundation Webinar Learning Series, exploring the importance of TV and growing your business, which, in that, uh, which will take place on June 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern. And you can register for both of those today via Eventbrite. Um, and for more information uh, regarding GBC, make sure you go to our website, um, which is greenwoodwbc.org. Um, and you will learn there about our membership process, information about joining the organization for upcoming events, our programs, how to become uh, listed on the Buy Black directory and becoming Black owned certified. Um, and feel free to also contact us at info at greenwoodwbc.com. Until next time, thank you all again for tuning in. Y'all have a great week.